This section of Tooth Atlas version 6.0 is the permanent tooth section. And it really is the heart of the Tooth Atlas. Uh, you'll notice that the index of it is this visual which you can roll over and decide which tooth that you want to look at. Um, you'll notice that the nomenclature in the Universal Palmer and International nomenclatures is listed on this. So what we'll do is go into the index to get into the various parts of this. We realized early on that there were a number of ways of presenting reality here. And rather than choose one way, we elected to show all the ways. So in looking at tooth morphology, tooth anatomy, we have developed a number of different protocols. And I'll go through those with you right now. The first is what we call rotations and slices. This is a combination of photography, which is the image on the left, computer-generated models, which is the image in the middle, and radiographic data, which is the image on the right. Um, these are synchronized, and you can go through various angles of looking at these. So it gives you a way of looking at internal morphology, how that internal morphology is reflected in the radiograph, and how that internal morphology is reflected on the external surface of the tooth. Along with this, we have slice data. And the data on the upper right side is actual mechanical grinding of the teeth. We put this in a milling machine, computer-controlled milling machine, and actually section down the teeth. The data on the lower right is taken off of the CAT scan data, and it slices through the CAT scan data. And we can go down through this, and you can take a virtual trip through the tooth from the cusp tips all the way down through the root cross sections down to the apex, and you can see how the, cruise, the tooth cross sections change and how that's reflected in the canal morphology. We'll go back to the index page, and we'll look at the upper first molar now. And what I want to show you here is a 3D model. This is really one of the main reasons that we went into this. We realized that being able to completely interact with this tooth was a very, very powerful way of learning the morphology. There are actually three models here. There's a model of the dentin, a model of the enamel, and a model of the pulp space. And these can be controlled individually. Right now, we've selected the dentin. We can control the transparency of the dentin from completely opaque to completely transparent. So let's take this and make it completely opaque. We'll click, take the enamel, and make it completely opaque. Now we can take this tooth and using mouse commands, we can rotate this around and look at it. And if you're a periodontist, dental hygienist, your interest is going to be in the external anatomy. Where is the calculus going to hide? Where of this external anatomy is going to cause you problems in your scaling? If you're an endodontist like myself, you're going to be interested in the internal anatomy of the pulp space. So we'll now take this and make this transparent, and you can see that we can look down through this and see the pulp space. And this allows us to get a pretty good idea of the various anatomies that you can get in a tooth. You'll notice in this section alone that we have data on 27 teeth. And um, this tries to reflect the huge variety that you can run into. So while this tooth is relatively straightforward, there is another tooth down here that reflects very, very complicated anatomy in the mesial buccal root. And this is a challenge for any kind of endodontic procedure. So this is a 3D model space. <clears throat> the next way of looking at this reality is through the morphology comparison section. This was developed by Dr. Charles Goodacre from Loma Linda University. And it's an anthology of literally all the information that's ever been written about morphology of teeth. He took that data and combined it and came up with average dimensions of what these teeth were like and had a medical artist draw these teeth to scale. So these teeth are the quintessential average tooth. They're the average of the averages in the data. It's presented as drawings. You've got five views, and each view gives you a different set of information. We'll go back to the facial view here, for instance, and there's two ways of looking at this information. You can go through the descriptors 
and you'll notice that the descriptor comes up with references in it and it shows you on the drawing where this descriptor is talking about or you can come over and rotate around, roll over the drawing and find these different features and you'll end up with a highlighting the description of it and the descriptor will come up. To give an example of how much information is in here, we hit the show all command. These are all of the features that are talked about in just the facial view of this upper first molar. So there's an enormous amount of information in here. The comparison section is a companion to this. And what it does is rather than talking about the individual tooth, it compares that tooth and its features to the teeth around it. So for instance, let's take a look at the maxillary molars the occlusal views, and this gives you a comparison of how the first, second, and third molars compare to each other. And again, there's a wealth of information in here that you can look at. Uh, another example would be uh, lingual view of, of all of the molars, uh, facial view of all of the molars. So it gives you an idea of how these teeth compare to those around them. Another feature of this is a radiographic view, and there's two sections to this. The first is kind of a quintessential average radiograph of what an upper first molar would be, and this is designed to show the features that you can see in a radiograph. And If you go in and you roll over these different features, you'll get descriptors of what these are. Or you can go in, do the show all command again, roll over these and find out what these features are. Or you can go down through the titles and find out what these features are and where they're located. So it gives you a couple variations in how to view this. Along with this, we have an annotated Panorex, which is the same type of thing. There's various structures. You can do the rollover. You can do the clicking on the title to find out where these structures are. Again, a lot of information is described here. This page shows up on every x-ray page for every tooth. And even though there's only one Panorex model, it's available in a lot of places. The last thing is an x-ray database. We have well over a thousand x-rays in the Tooth Atlas. Many of these are endodontic cases because they are very good at showing up the complex anatomy that you can run into. Some of them are x-rays of just anomalies that you can run into. So this gives you the ability to look through a lot of variations. All of these x-rays you can use with the proper contribution of the person that submitted them in lectures. So it gives you a powerful resource for a presentation development. The last thing is the study quiz. There's so much information in here, particularly if you look at the comparisons and morphology section that it's difficult to really figure out what's important and what's not. And what we've done with the study quiz is try to focus that attempt at getting what information is the most relevant, especially from a student standpoint. So if you take this quiz, let's just guess at one of these and submit the answer. Well, I got that one wrong, but it does give me the right answer. If you go through this quiz and learn from the quiz, it'll give you the information that really is um, necessary for a board situation, for instance. Let's go back to the main page. So that's the permanent tooth section of Tooth Atlas 6.